Let's assume we have a non-right triangle that's completely solved. We know all three angles and all three sides. Suppose we want to know its area. Okay, we're going somewhere with this, don't give up. You should remember from geometry that the area of a triangle is one half the length of the base times the height. Well, we know the length of the base because we know all three sides, but we don't know the height, at least not directly. But we can draw this right triangle. We know side B and angle A, and we want to know H. Sine of A equals H over B, where H stands for height, not hypotenuse. So height equals B sine A. This is a common application of trigonometry, see TR-17 for a review. So the base is C and the height is B sine A. So the formula for the area of the triangle is one half C B sine A. The same pattern can be applied to all three vertices. Let's tip the triangle over to the right and find the area. One half AC sine B. A is the base, and C sine B is the height. One more tip over, and the area is one half B A sine C. So the area of a triangle is one half the product of any two sides times the sine of the angle between them. This is a very handy fact to know, but it's not what we're interested in. What's more important to our purposes is this statement of equality. All of these expressions are equal because they all represent the same quantity, the area of the triangle. So let's set them all equal to each other and divide them all by one half ABC. We get some nice cancellations. In the leftmost expression, the one half cancels, the C's cancel, and the B's cancel, leaving us with sine of angle A over length of side A. In the middle expression, we get cancellations of one half A and C. This leaves us with sine B over B. In the rightmost expression, the one half B's and A's cancel, leaving sine C over C. These three expressions are all equal to each other in all triangles. We can also take the reciprocal of all three, they'll be identical to each other also. And these equalities are the law of sines. In any triangle, the ratio between the sine of an angle and the length of the opposite side is constant. Here we can see a color-coded triangle. As its size and shape changes, the value on the bottom line changes. It represents the length divided by the sine of the opposite side. But the value is always the same for all three ratios. So we can use this to solve triangles. In this case, we know an angle and its opposite side. That's the key to being able to use the law of sines. We must know an angle side opposite pair. In fact, well, when you see a nail, you hit it with a hammer, and when you see an angle side opposite pair, you hit it with the law of sines. When we use the law of sines, we set up two fractions equal to each other, where we know three of the numbers, including an angle side opposite pair and we want to know the value of the fourth variable. Please let me suggest that you start with the unknown value as the numerator of your first fraction. It will be a side if you know the opposite angle, or an angle if you know the opposite side. In this case, we'll solve for the red question mark, so we put it in the numerator of the first fraction and the opposite angle in the denominator. When you put angles in the fraction, remember to use the sine function on them. This fraction is equal to the same ratio between the angle side opposite pair we already know. Don't accidentally flip the two fractions. The angle should be in the numerator of both or the denominator of both. When we isolate the unknown variable, we end up multiplying the right fraction by the denominator of the left fraction. That's why it's a good idea to always start the law of sines with the unknown in the numerator of the first fraction. With practice, you can solve this with your calculator in one step. Right fraction times denominator of left fraction. Easy. 13.17. We're still missing two measures, but we know two angles, the two at the bottom. So we can determine the third because the sum is 180 degrees. So the top angle is 59 degrees. 
Now we use the law of sines again, starting with the unknown side. Denominator is the opposite measure, set equal to the given angle side opposite pair. Solve for the unknown, 12.10. Congratulations, you just solved an AAS triangle. Let's solve another triangle. Well, this looks different. There's no triangle drawn for us, but we won't panic. We'll just sketch it ourselves and write the measurements we're given. Two angles and the side between them, an ASA triangle. But except for the SSA triangle that I mentioned last video, I don't think you should ever be concerned about the configuration of givens. What I mean is, some students learn, for an AAS triangle, do this, and for an ASA triangle, do this, and for an SAS triangle, do this. If you try to remember steps, you'll just forget them. It's better to understand the tools available to you and solve each triangle methodically. If you find that you know two angles, subtract to get the third. Side angle opposite pair, use the law of sines. Right triangle, Pythagorean theorem. So without knowing or memorizing the steps you're supposed to use to solve an ASA triangle, let's just solve it. We have three unknowns, an angle and two sides. We can look for side angle opposite pairs, but we won't find any. But we do know two angles, so we can use them to find the third, which is 72.5 degrees. Now we have a side angle opposite pair and can use the law of sines. We'll start with side B. B over sine 62.5 degrees equals 4.56 meters divided by sine 72.5 degrees. Solving for side B, we get 3.86 meters. Now let's find C. C over sine 45.0 degrees equals 4.56 meters over sine 72.5 degrees. Solving for side C, we get 3.08 meters, and before you know it, we've solved the triangle. You can use the law of sines with any triangle, including right triangles, but right triangles are usually easy to solve with the Pythagorean theorem and trig functions, but you can use it with right triangles if you want to. One more short and very important point to make to set up the next video. Here's a triangle where we're given three sides. We can look for a side angle opposite pair, but there aren't any. There aren't any angles, so we won't find a pair. And since we don't know any angles, we can't subtract from 180 degrees to find others. It's always good to see if your instructor gives you a right triangle without telling you. Then you'd know one more angle, 90 degrees, and could get started from there. Way back in video TR-09, we covered using the Pythagorean theorem to determine if a triangle is a right triangle, but this one isn't. So, it seems we're stuck, but there's one more tool available to us, the law of cosines, that we'll cover in the next video, TR-29. This lesson has a TR-28X video with extra problems. I'll simply give you some triangles to solve. With practice, you should be able to solve triangles effortlessly.